60% of Saudis are under age 20. Um, so it's an enormous uh, bulge of young people who uh, have grown up without much respect or gratitude for the royal family because they did not grow up in an impoverished Saudi Arabia, but they grew up in a diminished uh, economic Saudi Arabia. The country had big development in the 70s and 80s with oil money, and the population has exploded, so that money is spread over many more people. Um, and uh, the analogy I use in the book is that, uh, you know, what used to be a penthouse has become Motel 6. You know, it's simply not the same um, level of uh, standard of living. And young people, because they do have access to information that their parents or grandparents did not, are much more frustrated and uh, restless. Uh, Saudis work for the government. They do not work in the private sector. Ninety percent of the employees in the private sector are foreigners, um, mostly Muslims, a few Westerners, but and mostly South Asians, Indians, Bangladeshis, Pakistanis. They're no longer so fond of importing Egyptians and Lebanese and uh, um, and Yemenis to do the low-level work. So the religious pillar uh, is not as strong as it used to be because young people can see the big gap between the way religion is preached and the way it's practiced. Um, they see palaces, you know, that are blocks long, and uh, young people, um, one young guy, uh, was jailed for this, but he went around to poor people's homes and uh, took photos inside their homes and posted it on YouTube. I mean, social media really is, uh, in a sense, uh, revolutionizing things there because people, um, another incident, a young woman in a shopping mall wearing nail, red nail polish was uh, stopped by the religious police. She took out her cell phone filmed the entire encounter, told them you don't have the right to harass me. The real police came and separated her and the religious police. She filmed this entire thing and put it on YouTube. Um, people are tweeting to each other uh, a, a picture showing a fence, a white fence. Um, and when you touch that white fence, it falls and the picture of a senior Saudi prince pops up who is famous for fencing and taking land. So, you know, young people are communicating, in other words, all kinds of things, true or untrue, that they were never able to uh, uh, communicate and share before. So <clears throat> this has helped to undermine the credibility of the religious establishment. Um, and beyond that, um, the religious establishment in the eyes of many Saudis, especially conservative ones, has proved itself in their minds more willing to focus on the political needs of King Abdullah than on the um, wishes of Allah. So that, for instance, when the king opened a university in 2009 outside of Jeddah that mixes Saudi men and women with foreign men and women, the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. Um, one of the senior ulama was asked, um, is this mixing proper? Because of course the uh, Wahhabi view is that mixing is a sin, and he said, no, it isn't proper. So the king fired him. And then some of the other senior ulama suddenly discovered that the prophet has had his hair washed by women and there, you know, there might have been some mixing here and there. Um, and so that level of convenience. And then one of the head of the religious police in Mecca said, my mutawa are not going to enforce the non-mixing rule. So he was fired by the head of the religious police in Riyadh, who then was called by the king and told to reinstate this man. So you had this vision of 
the king's defenders firing the king's, uh, you know, critics, etc. Um, so people can see all that. They're not uh, uh, blind. 